Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. As you can see, this time we're looking at the dual SID board from Dave Curran at uh, Time Mouth Software again. Um, it's taken me a while to get around to looking at this just because I've had so many bits and pieces to look at and I've just not been feeling well again all week. It's just been a really hard week. This, it's this weather, it's really getting me down. It just rains all the bloody time at the moment and it's, uh, it's quite dark. I'm starting to wonder if I'm suffering from uh, a bit of sad as well, you know, just because of how little sunlight there is. So, yeah, anyway, roll on spring. Uh, that's all I can say. Um, so as you can see, you know, um, this was a follow-on really from the video I did with a Swinsid where Dave um, helped me out with a chip select issue with a read-write, uh, you know, the fact that the second SID was being read and you had a bus conflict there with two ch chips trying to drive the data bus at the same time effectively when they're being read. Um, now, like I say, following on from that, Dave went away and said, uh, I think now's a good time to create a board actually um, for myself. So he went away and prototyped this board um, and he's done a really nice job here as you can see. Um, He's used some modern, um, I don't know if these are the uh, LDO type, I think they are LDO type uh, voltage regulators that um, they don't seem to dissipate very much in the way of heat. Um, as you can see it's marked here on the board 15 volts DC so it's got all these little clips um, and I'll just show you, it just clips over here on this particular revision C28 onto the positive side obviously um, of there like that and then that's it for the power. Um, and then obviously just you know just plug your SID into your SID socket uh, and you're away. Now I di I, he did mention that on this particular revision he might change this, he might put this pin header point upwards or move it around or something just because on some revisions you know the SID goes here and it'll probably conflict with the ports and things on the back. It's the same problem I had with the SID to SID board when I had my regulator sticking out the back some, somewhere there so he'll be doing a revision to that I think. Um, but in my case, you know, the SID's down here, so it fits quite nicely. The only thing I have had to do is just bend one or two of these caps just slightly out of the way. Um, but as you can see, he's used an extra socket under here just to stand it off, you know, stand it up a little bit. So it doesn't interfere with anything. It fits, you know, it fits in that position there quite nicely. Um, but yeah, come back to these regulators. So the, the way this board is configured, um, this regulator is a 12 volt regulator. Now there was a sticker under here, I've had to remove it. It's a long story, I don't really want to get into the details, but um, yeah, there were some really nice stickers on here. You might have seen them in the previous video, one that said uh, 6581 uh, six, eight, uh, and 8580. Uh, have I got those around the right way? Yeah, I think I have. Um, yeah, so the, the, the 12 volt regulator is here, and he's got a 9 volt regulator here. So the idea being, like, say, you can have a you know a standard 6581 here, and uh, you know the NMOS, uh, whatever it is, uh, is it HMOS? I can't remember. Uh, 8580 on this side here. Um, but in theory, you know, I was thinking about this. You could potentially remove the 9 volt regulator and just join a wire across, and that you know this. The amount of um, current that will provide, you could easily drive two identical, you know, six five eight ones um, off that regulator. Um, likewise, you could just do away with that one, or you know, two off, two nine volt regulators. There, to, you know, there's different ways you can configure that. Is the point I'm trying to make. You don't necessarily just have to have a six five eight one and eight five eight zero. You could have two eight five eight zeros. You know, as long as you get your regulator right, you don't want twelve volts going into an eight five eight zero. You know, and vice versa. So I've also been having some interesting problems with the Nano Swinsid. Um, if you saw my previous video there with the replacement PLA from Dave, it's actually that chip on, on his board. I've got my own chip in there. But anyway, that, that PLA board was having a problem with the Nano Swinsid, and it was a timing difference. I worked out um, on the chip, well I theorised it was going to be on the chip select, so I put a cap on the chip select, 68 peak forest to ground, uh, I think it's pin 8 on the, the Nano Swinsid. No sound issues at all when you're using a substitute PLA. So that's an interesting point to note that if you're using a repl some sort of replacement PLA and you get any sound glitches and things with your um, Nano Swinsid, you need a cap, um, you know, let's say from the chip select pin to ground. Um, now that worked fine for the um, replacement PLA. I put back the MOS PLA in here, um, and on this board you get you get sound problems again with the Nano Swinsid, despite the fact it's using the physical, actual PLA. So, you know, uh, don't make the, the jump to the conclusion that the sound issues are just because of the PLA, they're not. It's, um, in this instance, there's a, an OR gate on here for the that drives the chip select of the second SID, um, and it's the delay that's, you know, the propagation time there on that OR gate, which is causing issues with the Nano Swinsid again. So in this, ca this case, I've got a 10 peak Farad cap on there on the chip select and that's solved it um, and I guess you probably the, the, there will be an inherent delay with that the way that's designed there going through that OR gate um, it's also got me thinking that actually you could experiment with different um, cap size 
there anyway. If you you know if you, you got a dual sid solution, you wanted to get a more of a, a, a difference in timing between the two channels. You could actually add um, a cap on here like this. You know, just a few picofarads, ten picofarads, maybe twenty-two picofarads. I think if you go much beyond that, you'll probably find you'll get issues where you know the, the sid won't pick up things at the right time and stuff. But yeah, I mean, in large part, the actual physical. You know, moss sids are much more tolerant than these nano swin sids. This nano swin sid seems to have a very tight tolerance window that you remove that 10 peak forward cap and the sound's all over the place. It's missing sounds, it stops when it shouldn't, it's got the wrong, in you know, just completely wrong, like the timing's well out. But like I say, with the 10 peak forward cap on this board, when that's in the second slot, um, no issues at all. And it's important to know that you put it in the first slot. You don't need the cap because obviously you've not got the OR gate delaying things. So, yeah, it's um, it's really interesting, um, you know, uh, how all of this stuff can can conflict and cause you issues. But there's a solution to everything. You know, all of this I've got this working in every sort of scenario. There, um, I'll connect this up now. I'll show you. Um, if we just get that, you know, it just positions nicely on the board there. Clip this on. Sorry, knocking the camera as usual. Um, and at the back here. I just need to get some heat shrink tubing on this. You can see I've just quickly just um, you know connected three wires to a pin header here, um, and it's one of these like I used last time, you know, a three and a half mil um, output, and it just connects straight to that pin header centre pin as you come and ground, and then you've got that left and right. Um, so yeah, I can just plug that in, and we'll give it a try. So I'll play a bit of Martin Galway here and I'll disconnect the, the connections to the back of the TV one by one just so you can hear because there's a difference. The Nano Swinsid is not very loud. Um, that's just uh, a problem inherent with that design of that particular chip. Um, I guess you can, might be able to tweak some of the components. I'll speak to Dave about that later um, on the audio output side because that's another important thing that I didn't touch upon here is that the that this board has got two different sort of um, audio um, amplifier out sections, if you like. It's more of a preamp than anything. But the, I think the way they worked on the 6581, you know, the original bread bin boards versus the C64C boards, you know, using the 8580 were different. I think one used like an open collector and the other one was like the opposite of that, I think, or some, 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 something along those lines. Um, and Dave's put the, uh, you know, the different components on there um, along with the regulators. So I guess, you know, it's one of those, if you want to. You know, just a dual 8580. You might, you know, you might want to advise Dave of that in advance so that he could perhaps build you one of these just with, you know, two 8580s in mind rather than um, two 6581s. Anyway, I'll start this up. And we'll just, I'll just disconnect it at various points, you know, the different channels so you can hear um, the different SIDs. So I'll just disconnect one. You know, that's gone quite quiet. That must be the nano that's still playing. I'll turn up a little bit. Yeah, that's the nano. Put the nano back. Yeah, put the 6581 back. Move the nano. So that's just the 6581. That's both. Now, when both are connected, I'm not sure if my TV's kind of um, automatically compensating for the uh, you know lower level of one channel. It seems like it probably is because they do seem a bit more in balance when they're both connected at the same time. Yeah, that's working really well. Sounds amazing. Yeah, so hopefully you'll be able to pick some of that up on the microphone of the uh, camera here. It's not very good really for capturing stereo like this, but there is, you know, you can hear a difference there versus mono. Um, 
it's brilliant it really is well worth getting one of these so really well thought out well designed board this um, it's really nice um, I like the pin header output here for this you know the, the, the left right and ground um, I love the 15 volt um, input here and you know these LDO regulators that they don't get warm at all you leave it on for an hour they're not even they're not even lukewarm it's amazing um, and I like the different audio outputs uh, you know sections that he's got here for the different types of chips as well um, one thing I didn't point out is here you can just see chips it says there chips like two and he's put a little link across there what you can do is you can use this as a SID to SID board you could take the wire there from the that, that pad and put it onto the back of one of the expansion port you know the cartridge port um, connectors here just as you do with a SID to SID board and use this as a SID to SID board so it's kind of you know it's the best of both worlds this you know you can use it as a, a dedicated stereo solution you know an actual stereo solution rather than just a, a pseudo stereo you know a dual mono pseudo stereo solution that uh, I tend to use mine for um, but this is really nice uh, much appreciated Dave thanks for all the hard work that's gone into this um, I'm very impressed um, it does the job really well no issues at all so uh, yeah I think you can start producing these um, thanks for watching I'll see you soon